Hello everyone, this is Yours Trivia, and today we're continuing the Fall of Wait Let's Talk War series with Act 2, titled Samasha's Coup, as we'll spend the next few episodes looking at Samasha's life leading up to his own pinnacle political moment in 254, where he would end up orchestrating the abdication of the Wei Emperor Cao Feng. So to get us started here in episode 1, we will first take a look at Samasha's upbringing. Born in the year 208, to Sima Yi's main wife, Zhang Chunhua, Sima Shi was Sima Yi's eldest son. At the time, Sima Yi had just reluctantly joined Cao Cao's court as Cao Pi's peer tutor after years of faking an illness to avoid working for Cao Cao. Of course, his father's political preference did not impact Sima Shi's upbringing, as he would grow up to become quite the scholar himself, as he was frequently compared in his youth to other talented peers such as Xia Hou Xuan, and He Yan. And because of this association, Sima Shi and Xia Hou Xuan became quite close, as in Sima Shi's early teens, his father, Sima Yi, made the decision to set up a marriage between Sima Shi and the Xia Hou clan, as Sima Shi would end up marrying Xia Hou Xuan's younger sister, Xia Hou Hui. Now, Xia Hou Xuan and Xia Hou Hui's father was Xia Hou Shang, who was the nephew of Xia Hou Yuan, and their mother, was Princess De Yang, who was Cao Zhen's sister. Xia Hou Shang was a close friend of Cao Pi, and as Sima Yi was also a strong supporter and ally of Cao Pi, the two of them were in the same political camp, which explains why they would cement their political relationship with the marriage between their eldest son and daughter. Now, despite the young couple's young age, as Sima Shi married when he was around 17 years old, while Xia Hou Hui was just turning 15, the loving couple would go on to have five kids within the first decade of their marriage. Unfortunately for Sima Shi, all five children would be girls. But according to historical records, this did not impact Sima Shi's relationship with Xia Hou Hui, as she was described as a diligent wife who actively aided her husband on all sorts of matter, thanks to the fact that she was also very well educated. But according to the Book of Jin, precisely because of her constant involvement in the Sima clan affairs, which were not always faithful to Wei, Sima Shi became increasingly paranoid of his own wife, as her status as a member of the Xia Hou clan tested their relationship. Finally, in 234, during a particular bad plague, Sima Shi used the widespread illness as a cover when he would end up poisoning and killing Xia Hou Hui, his wife of over a decade, and the mother of his five daughters. Sadly, Xia Hou Hui was just 24 years old when she died. While this event was recorded down in the Book of Jin, there is no mentioning of this in the records of the Three Kingdoms, and regardless of what actually happened, Xia Hou Hui passed away in 234, and not long after, Sima Shi remarried to Lady Wu, who was the daughter of General Wu Zhi. For those who might remember from our past Let's Talk Lore series on Cao Pi's ascension as the first emperor of Wei, Wu Zhi, along with Sima Yi, were two of the four friends of Cao Pi, or Cao Pi's strongest supporters during his air battle with Cao Zhi. So essentially, Sima Yi was marrying his son off to the daughter of another one of his political allies, but Sima Shi's marriage to Lady Wu would be rather short-lived, as the two of them did not get along, and before long, Sima Shi would divorce Lady Wu and move on to marry Yang Huiyu of the esteemed young gentry clan of Taishan. Now, whenever I say esteemed gentry clan, it usually means that this particular gentry clan had enjoyed a long history of political success, and that would indeed be the case here for the young clan, as for nine generations straight, someone in the clan held at least administrator-level title. Just take Yang Huiyu's particular branch of the clan, for example. Her great-great-grandfather, Yang Qin, was a provincial garrison commander for the capital province. Her great-grandfather, Yang Ru, was the grand tutor. Her grandfather, Yang Xu, was the Nanyang commandery administrator. And finally, her father, Yang Dao, was the Shangdang commandery administrator. On top of all this, Yang Huiyu's mother, 
was Lady Tai, the daughter of the late Han scholar Tai Yong, and the sister of the famed female poet Tai Yan. And while not relevant at this time, it's also worth mentioning that Yang Huiyu's younger brother Yang Hu will later become the Jin Grand General who conquers the South, as it would be his plans that would ultimately conquer Wu, thus ending the Three Kingdoms period for good. Yet all this prestige could not produce another child for Sima Shi, as the five daughters with his first wife would be all the children Sima Shi would have in his entire lifetime, as neither Lady Wu or Yang Huiyu would produce any more heirs. This, of course, was a big problem for Sima Shi and Sima Yi, as Sima Shi was the eldest son and represented the natural heir of the clan, especially as Sima Yi was extremely pleased with this son, for Sima Shi was not only a well-read scholar with some early signs of military talent, but also a poised, calculating, and cautious politician. But as Sima Shi was still young, Sima Yi would wait until close to his own death before asking his second son, Sima Zhao, to pass one of his sons in Sima Yu over to Sima Shi to continue Sima Shi's line. Now, this often overlooked act will have grand historical implications as Sima Yi essentially ended up picking his favorite grandson, who showed the most signs of becoming a talented leader, to hand over to his eldest son and most trusted heir. And if Sima Shi did not die so young and suddenly, the Jin dynasty would have been founded by Sima Yu and not by his older brother from the same mother, Sima Yan, who stayed as Sima Zhao's son. But this is a family intrigue that we'll dive deeper into in a future Let's Talk Lore series involving Sima Yan and the founding of the Jin dynasty. For now, let's return to Sima Shi who did not get a chance to participate in government in his 20s, largely because Cao Pi disliked all the second-generation talents, especially the so-called scholars and philosophers like Xia Xuan and He Yan, who Cao Pi saw as mostly superficial and incapable. Thus, by association, Sima Shi also remained unemployed until he was 30 years old when he was picked by Emperor Cao Rui to become one of his imperial attendants from the year 237 to 239. After gaining some experience in this post, Sima Shi bounced around various military roles within the capital until he was finally promoted to General of the Central Guards in 244 as part of a political compromise made between the co-regents Cao Shuang and Sima Yi. Previously, we had discussed this political arrangement in great detail in our Sima Yi's coup Let's Talk Lore series, so we're not going to be repeating ourselves here, as the end result is that Sima Shi gained control of the central guards that protects the capital city of Luoyang, and most importantly, the power of appointment for low to mid-level officer positions within the Wei army. This power of appointment was the most coveted power of the general of the central guard position, and the two previous officials in this post had used this power to enrich and empower themselves, as Jiang Ji mainly sold low to mid-level officer positions for monetary bribes, while Xia Hou Xuan, who held the position before Sima Shi, used this power to gain favors with other members of the Cao and Xia Hou clans by handing out low to mid-level officer positions for influence. Sima Shi did neither of those things, as in the three years that he held this post, he only promoted through merit, especially as he promoted many capable officers who came from poor and non-gentry backgrounds that were simply never given a chance for promotion under the two previous regimes. Naturally, Sima Shi did not do this only because it was the right thing to do, but also because he was trying to win loyalty from the troops stationed in the capital, as his father Sima Yi was losing in a political battle with fellow co-regent Cao Shuang, and the safety and survival of their clan was at stake. But at this crucial moment in 247, Sima Shi's mother, Zhang Chunhua, would pass away to old age, and following Confucian tradition, Sima Shi ended up resigning from his post to guard her tomb for three years. While Sima Shi would disappear from public view and out of everyone's mind, 
When he reappeared on the eve of Sima Yi's coup at Gaopingling, the world will learn how capable Sima Shi really was, as during his time serving as the general of the Central Guards, not only did he win over the loyalty of a good portion of the Central Guards through promoting by merit, he also secretly organized a private army of 3,000 si shi, or death guards, named for their willingness to give up their lives for Sima Shi on command. And despite being out of a position of power for more than two years while tomb guarding, when Sima Shi returned and gave his signal, these 3,000 death guards quietly resurfaced in Luoyang and was ready to serve Sima Shi and the Sima clan in their takeover of the capital during the Gulpingling incident. So while the coup was Sima Yi's plan, Sima Shi was its ultimate executioner, proving once again to his father that the clan would be in good hands. And with that, our episode here comes to an end, as we'll continue tomorrow with episode 2, titled Sima Yi's Heir, to talk about the transition of power from Sima Yi to Sima Shi, as we'll revisit Sima Shi's role during the first rebellion of Huainan and its aftermath. So hopefully you all have enjoyed this episode enough to consider subscribing to the channel for more content on Three Kingdoms history, or simply support the channel by leaving a comment below, or just by hitting the like button. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye!